In 2010, the United Nations held a special screening of a feature film. The Whistleblower is based on events in the life of a woman who risked her life to expose the truth. I have never considered myself a whistleblower, and even when I did um, report what was going on through numerous channels, I really felt that was just my job. In 1999, four years after the end of the war in Bosnia, Catherine Bolkovac arrived at a United Nations building in Sarajevo as a newly hired member of the International Police Task Force. Bolkovac had spent 10 years as a cop in Lincoln, Nebraska. But now she was working for DynCorp, a private military contractor funded by the U.S. government. We were working with 40 to 50 other nations worldwide, some who had very little training in the type of police work that we did in the United States. There was no accountability to anyone, really, other than this government contractor that we were working for. So it was very easy, I think, for people to just disregard any of their maybe morals or convictions or lifestyles that they had in the States and kind of go native, as they called it. And going native was something that a lot of men did there. One day, the local police department there, the, the Bosnian police, uh, brought me a, a young girl who they had found dumped on the side of the road to my office. And I began an interview process with her. The victim spoke no English, but kept repeating the word Florida. Bolkovac knew about the Florida Bar, a dive frequented by UN personnel. The film shows what happened next. We started searching. I found uh, under the bar an open uh, metal container like a, a box that closed that was open and inside was US dollars and a lot of uh, passports, East European passports of young women, which were kept in that box. And then, as she later wrote, I spotted a rickety set of stairs, which led to a wooden door. I did my best Magnum PI move and kicked it in. There on the other side, huddled seven young women with terrified faces. Littered about were a few plastic grocery bags full of miniskirts and glittery tank tops. Their work clothes. Where international money flows, um, so goes sex trafficking. Everyone knew what was going on. No one was willing to talk about it. No one was willing to actually stand up and say, hey, you know, do you guys think this is kind of wrong? Um, so, I mean, I was the first person to actually do that. This wasn't just the, you know, the street cops and the, the corrupt few on the ground. This corruption flew all the way to the top of the United Nations and through our State Department and diplomats. So this was something that was going to actually hamper the good old boys club. And I think that um, probably for that reason, that reason alone was the reason a lot, a lot more pressure was being put on me to stop these investigations. She didn't stop. On October 9th, 2000, Bolkovac sent an email with the subject, do not read this if you have a weak stomach or guilty conscience. If you think these girls are just prostitutes, you're mistaken. You know, this is what prostitution is, and I gave them a definition. This is what human trafficking is. This is where these girls are coming from. This is how old they are. So, you know, use your heads, guys. I sent that off to about 50 people. Uh, from the heads of you to the UN mission, to DynCorp managers, to my fellow colleagues, to human resources, to whoever I could think of that might make a difference, um, and felt relief. I had had threats made toward me on a daily basis as a police officer. I mean, that's something you just get used to. Uh, yeah, it was very um, unsettling to be in Bosnia, to not have my gun at my side, to not have people I could trust to have to be really thinking about who I could trust. And when those people who I thought I did trust were warning me that you know things were being talked about, a lot of gossip in the UN headquarters, a lot of DynCorp employees were plotting behind my back. Uh, so th those were some pretty unsettling moments for me. Bolkovac was reassigned to a desk job to get her out of the way. But instead, it gave her access to files she could use to prove her case. Soon after, DynCorp fired her 
for supposedly falsifying timesheets. She gathered up her evidence and escaped by car from Bosnia into Holland. When I left the country with the files is the first time I actually broke down and cried. I was pretty rattled, uh, but for the most part, I, I was able to maintain my composure and uh, gather enough evidence and basically get the hell out of the country. Bolkovac sued Dynecor in England over her dismissal. The court found that her investigative work was the real reason she was fired. But that was as far as the system would allow her to go. She settled out of court, wrote a book, and traveled the world telling her story. When the movie starring Rachel Weisz screened at the UN, people were appalled. You know, corruption within the United Nations, corruption in private contracting, what we're really doing in this world with all these peace building missions, human trafficking, gender issues, women's issues. But you know, bottom line, you know, here we are 10, 15 years later, uh, no real changes have been made at the United Nations. Now a grandmother of six, Catherine Balkovec has been blackballed from international peacekeeping. The work she loves best, yet she has no regrets. Don't be afraid to change the world. Don't be afraid to speak out. And, you know, but if you do, you know, just be forewarned. You, you, you need to realize this is not an easy road ahead of you. And if you're not prepared for that, um, you're gonna have a really hard time. I think um, I would have done the same thing if I had to live my life over, I really do.